Sebastian Miller Martinez, MMA News, here with former title challenger and commentator Dan Hardy, here ahead of UFC Russia. So uh, we're just coming off of UFC 228, which was a big title fight, it's supposed to have two, but it seems like for some reason this has come a little bit in the shadow of that event because uh, it's perhaps not getting the publicity that it should get, correct? Yeah, I, I agree, but I think, I think as soon as people tune into the card, I think they'll realize how stacked it is. I mean, there are a lot of fighters on this card that are not necessarily known to the mainstream in, in the US and well certainly um, you know certainly outside of Russia but there are a lot of fighters on this card uh, one you've just been talking to Peter yeah. Yan you know just such talented fighters and to be honest I mean Russia's always had so many tough fighters coming out of it I even remember back to you know early UFC days when we had the likes of uh, you know almost Omar Suluev and Andrei Semenov you know I mean was it Amar Sulev against uh, Chuck Liddell that UFC 35 or something like that? You know what I mean? Like the, the, the Russian fighters have always been incredibly tough as well as talented and skilled. And, and I, I just, it's only a matter of time before they just start kind of taking over a lot of these weight classes, I think. And I think, to be honest, this is the, the event where we're going to start seeing that happen. And uh, the Russian scene in general has been a little bit... I mean, everyone's always known of it. People have known of, for example, M1 Global and all, on all such things. But how much do you think this event will do for Russian MMA in particular? Um, I think it will do massive things. I think, it, I think it opens up Russian MMA to the rest of the world. You know, Russian MMA has always been very strong. You know, to be honest, the Russian scene's a lot like Poland. You know, they've got a, they've got a very strong promotion of their own. They're... Um, they've got so many good talented fighters that don't really need to leave the country to make a good living. So I think that Russia's kind of been self-sustainable for a long, long time for mixed martial arts. But what that's done is that's allowed the standard in, in Russia to, to continue to grow, same as Poland. And I think that as soon as the UFC showed up with the octagon, it kind of opens the door to the rest of the world. Um, and, we, you know, we've seen glimpses of the Russian fighters on other cards. You know, obviously, I mean, Merbek Tysimov, obviously everybody knows of Khabib. There are so many fighters that people are aware of, but when when we see an event in Russia stacked with Russian talent, people are like, ah, oh, okay, Russia's a major player in the mixed martial arts world. And I, and I think that there are still a lot of people out there that aren't realizing that. This is, like you said, a pretty stacked card, and I'm inclined to agree, especially the main card. Uh, if we discount sort of... Uh, pretty explosive main event. What do you feel are some of, some of the under the radar fights that people should make sure to catch on Fight Pass? To, I mean, to be honest, well, if we're talking the main card, I think a lot of people are, are, are not paying enough attention to uh, Jan Bojavec against Nikita Krylov. You know, for me, Krylov was amazing in his first run of the UFC. A lot of people forget he was up at heavyweight. He moved down to light heavyweight. You know, he went off, he went out the UFC on one loss and he's put four together, in, in, you know, since, since he left the UFC. And I just, he's one of those fighters that he's big enough for the weight class to cause anybody problems. He's talented enough in every range to, to contend with everybody. And I think, you know, I think the UFC have done a really good job of matching him with Jan Bojovic, who's, again, you know, a tough, well-rounded fighter, a very well-rounded fighter, which is the key in both of these guys. A lot of the time, you know, we see fighters that are excellent in one thing. Obviously, the main event is a good example of that. You know, Olenek's a, a decent striker, but he's excellent submissions. And Mark Hunt's got good takedown defense and no submissions. But when it comes to striking, he's one of the best in the world. The, the newer generations are just so well-rounded, and you know, and you, you know, you move down the card. Rustam Habalov is an incredibly talented fighter. Peter Yan, I'm just so excited to see that guy's career develop and that call out. I'm not going to give away your scoop, but what a call out that was. That's a fight I would like to see for sure. But I, I mean, you know, you talked about him, you know, it being difficult for him to live up to his hype. The thing, the difference, the difference with him and with a lot of fighters is that his hype's deserving. You know what I mean? Like he deserves every bit of hype he gets. He doesn't talk himself up. He's very calm. He's very quiet. But when he steps in there, he's, an, he's a ferocious monster. When he's in there, and he's he's lateral movement and he's switching stance to kind of scoop people up against the fence and start beating them up with body shots. It's one of the best in in, in the in the sports at it. So uh, yeah, I mean, this, this is the event where people realize how good the Russian fighters are. I think. I think two other debuting fighters that a lot of people will be keeping an eye on, of course, uh, Alexei Konchenko, yeah. undefeated guy. How much do you know about him? Well, I mean, 18-0, that, that's, that's all you need to know, really. You know, it's, it, it's time we saw him in the UFC. I mean, I've looked down his record. I mean, there are a lot of names on there that are unfamiliar, but that doesn't necessarily mean that the, the talent pool that he's, that he's swimming in is not stacked. But what we're going to see is, you know, him stepping in there against Thiago Alves, who we know is good. Yeah. You know, we know Thiago Alves is world class. He has been for many, many years. And, and he's still got the knowledge and the experience to, to really test uh, Konchenko. And that's what Konchenko needs at this point. And it, it's a good fight for him because obviously, you know, he's, he's on a massive win streak. 
if you beat Thiago Alves, immediately everybody knows who he is. Yeah. You know, it's one of those it's one of those fights where there's so much to gain in a, in a debut fight. But at 18, I know you can't really give him anybody else. You know, he has to get someone that, that's a well-known name, and he has to be on the main card. So, yeah, it, it's time we saw Konchenko in the UFC, and I, I, I think I think uh, Thiago Alves is just a perfect matchup. Well, another exciting undefeated fighter, Adam Yandiev, eight and zero or nine and zero, all first round finishes. Another guy who's kind of getting buried under some of the other stuff, but uh, yeah, what do you think the fans should expect of him? <laughs> more of the same, you know, more of the same. He, he just he doesn't really seem to look like he's, he's stepped out of second gear, to be honest, all the way through his career. You know, and, and he's at that point where, you know, he's, he's not quite 10 fights into his career yet, so we can test him against some of the European, uh, some of the, the UFC level fighters and see, you know, see what he's made of. Yeah. If, he's, if he's at that standard, then he's going to flourish very, very quickly. And if he's not, you know, he's not going to set him back too far, he can go and grab a couple of wins and come back. Um, I think I think there's there's a lot less to lose if you're you know if if you're under 10 fights unbeaten. It's when you get above 10 fights that's when the pressure really starts to mount because then you know 18 fights into your career unbeaten that that first loss is really going to taste very bitter. Whereas you know there are a lot of people that get to nine, ten, twelve fights sometimes without without taking a blemish. Um, and if you can get to the UFC level before that happens, then you know that's that's a you know a, a fantastic credential to have in your back pocket because people know that you you've got the ability to hang. There's a lot of, I was talking to my colleague about this, a lot of uh, close fights hard to pick. What do you think is the hardest fight to pick on the entire card? Honestly, I think it's I think it's the Jan Blachowicz Nikita Krylov fight. Yeah, I just I just I think they're both so talented. I think they're both they've n neither of them have reached their potential yet. I think Jan. I think we saw we've seen glimpses of Jan's potential. I, I think I mean the, the two that stand out to me obviously is debut the body kick against Latifi, absolutely outstanding. I mean. Anybody that's got that kind of power to shut Latifi off with a body kick like that. I mean, Latifi's built like a barrel. Yeah. You know, it's, it's very difficult to hurt someone that's built like that. So for him, for him to, to land that kick so quickly and so cleanly was absolutely spectacular. But more than anything, it was his performance against, against Gustafsson which stood out to me. Because although obviously he didn't come off with a win that night, he, he held his own against one of the best fighters in, in, in the division. Um, you know, someone that took John Jones five rounds and, you know, a lot of people thought that he was winning that fight until the spinning elbow landed. I, I, just, I just don't think we've seen the best of Jan Blachowicz yet. And I would say the same against, against Krilov. Uh, you know, I think him stepping away from the UFC for a little while has been, been good for him. He's got four wins under his belt. I spoke to him yesterday and I, I, one of my questions was, you know, how are you different? You know, how have you matured as a fighter? He just seems so much more sure of himself. He seems so much more confident, and, and that translates into his performances. You know, you, you watch his last fight against Maldonado. He just controlled the whole fight. Maldonado was on the back foot the whole time, and Krilov wasn't even throwing, a, you know, a high volume of strikes. But he was just he was commanding the space, and that is confidence. That is that's attitude that does that. And I think now he's back in the UFC on a card like this. He's got the spotlight on him. He's got a great opponent that can test him in every range. I, I think we're going to see the best of both of these fighters, and really, I, I can't pick this one at all. I, I, I keep going back and forth on it in my head. I don't make predictions when I'm commentating anyway, but I'm, I'm glad because I, I couldn't predict this one. Honestly, I couldn't. All right, well, there you have it. It's going to be decided by the gods, flip of a coin or something like that. We don't know who wins it. Neither me or Dan Hardy does. Lots of great fights to keep an eye on, uh, both on the undercard and the main card. So be sure to tune in for this historic event here in Moscow, UFC Russia. Dan, always a pleasure. Thanks a lot. Always. Thank you.